Amy here with Gold Plating Services. Today we are going to show you a new type of metal um, with our ProLab system here. Um, the metal we're going to be plating on today is a tungsten copper. So it's 80% tungsten and 20% copper. Um, for those of you that are familiar with tungsten, it's a very stubborn metal to plate onto. It can be very problematic. Um, also, if you um, can see, the size of our piece is actually a cylinder. Um, on this particular piece, the, the, the surface area inside of this tube does not have to be plated. All right, so here's the part that we're going to be plating onto. It's a tube, um, again, the tungsten copper mix. Um, the tricky part for me is going to be figuring out how we're going to rack them. Um, one of the easiest things I like to do is have some copper wire on hand. Copper is a great conductor, um, plus it comes in all sorts of thicknesses. Um, this particular one is thin enough but stiff enough that it will easily pull through the center of my tube. All right, and then it comes out the other end and I want to make sure that this particular part does not fall off the wire, so I'm just going to kind of twist it flatten it and trim my excess. Um, the nice thing about racking like this is it's not going to leave those little alligator marks or a, um, some kind of marking where the copper wire touches. Um, and then I'm going to leave some excess here at the top. And you can see I have five of these that we're going to be plating today. All right, so the first part with tungsten um, and copper is um, the preparation, getting the surface to um, etch or get it where the nickel or gold will bond to the surface. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to cycle through just a couple of these at a time. I'm going to twist my wires together. This will just help in, um, increase the conductivity. And then I'm going to start in my electrically bath. All right, guys, so here's our electric clean tower. Um, I'm going to make sure that my temperature is up or as close to 130 degrees. I've got my power supply about 5 volts. Um, with tungsten, I would highly recommend that your electric clean is hot. Electric clean will work at a lower temperature or even at room temperature, um, but for difficult metals such as tungsten and stainless steel, it's best to have that temperature nice and hot. So I'm actually going to um, straddle this over my bus bar, but I'm also going to connect it with my alligator clip. I want to make sure that it's fully submerged. I want to have as little rack area um, within the water or in the solution. And then I always will come up and double check my power supply. I want to make sure my ampers are popping up. Um, this is just a good indicator that you have a good electrical connection going on in your bath. Um, I'm going to let this part sit in here for about 30 seconds, maybe even a minute. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out of my electric clean. Um, where this is a tube, we want to really make sure that we get the inside of those tubes cleaned out and rinsed. Um, if not, then you get some of the solution either from the electric clean or from the following steps stuck in there, dripping out the bottoms. And if it's not fully rinsed off, it can cause adhesion problems, it can cause staining or darkening under your final plate. And so I like to have three different rinses, especially after my electric clean, because that's the most um, condensed solution, bubbly, that's attacking and cleaning that surface. And so your electric clean is gonna usually be your biggest problem with fully rinsing. Um, the next step after the electric clean for the tungsten copper is going to be our acid gold strike, um, our Tri-Val 24K gold strike. It is unique to our company. Um, with the Tri-Val, it doesn't require heating and it does um, only require about 10 to 15 seconds um, within the solution. The other nice thing with our tri-valve, um, before I go in, is when you pull it out of the solution after that 10 or 12 seconds, it's going to have deposited a very thin layer of 24 karat gold on that surface. A lot like the Woods Nickel Strike, um, the and that helps you make sure that the surface is all wetted out, that everything is applying correctly. 
So I'm gonna take these two pieces. I'm gonna kind of wrap it around my alligator clip. And we're gonna go into the solution for 10 seconds. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out of my tri -val. You can, I don't know if you'll be able to notice in the video, but there is a very light um, deposit of yellow. Um, the tri -val Gold Strike is a little bit more fumey. Um, I would take any additional precautions um, if you're sensitive to the fumes. Um, you can set up a, a fan that just kind of blows them away, wear a mask. Um, the nice thing is you're, you are only in there for a few seconds, so it's not an ongoing um, gas that's being let off. All right, so after our tri -val, um, we are going to go into our Copper Strike. Our Copper Strike has a couple different benefits. Um, one, it's going to, oops, we are stuck. Um, I'm gonna put that in there because we wanna go for about 30 seconds. Um, the copper strike is gonna add a nice conductive layer on top of that tungsten um, so that our gold plate can deposit to it. Um, the other benefit with the copper strike, very much like our tri -val, is it just deposits that thin layer. Um, that thin layer will help us um, confirm that there's no staining, um, that everything has wetted out. And then in this case, um, because we are pl um, plating on a difficult metal, what I'm gonna do is actually rinse and dry the part and do a tape test um, to make sure that the adhesion is good. That way, if we have any problems, the copper and the tri will be much easier to remove. Um, and then I will go back into my prior steps. If the copper does not come off with the tape, then I will go back through my electrically activator and gold process. Um, and we'll show you that in just a moment. All right, so again, just about 30 seconds. And as I'm pulling out of my copper strike here, you'll notice this nice, pretty, kind of a rose gold copper. This is not a, a plate, so it doesn't plate on there heavy, but it will give you enough for the purpose that we're doing today. All right, so there's my copper pieces. I'm going to go ahead and dry them and heat them down with a gun and we will be back in just a moment. All right, so I just finished using my heat gun to help me speed up the drying process. Um, what I'm gonna do is set these parts down. You can see the difference between the copper and the copper tungsten. We are going to do a tape test. So this is just our pre-testing to make sure everything has it adhered properly to the surface. And I'll pull that off, which looks great. If there was adhesion issues, then you would have seen the copper pull right off onto the tape. Um, so that just tells me these parts are ready for the next step. Um, because they have dried out, we have to repeat the ElectroClean. And now that because the surface is copper, we'll use our surface activator for about 10 to 12 seconds to activate it. And then it will be all ready to go into our gold solution. All right, now we are ready to go into our gold solution. I will do one more rinse before I go in just to avoid any contamination. I'm gonna go ahead and straddle my parts on there. And I'm gonna connect my alligator clip. And it's always important to make sure your power supply is on. If the gold, if the, your part actually sat in there and your gold tower is not on, um, or your alligator isn't clipped, you can have like darkening or almost like a weird blackening of your piece. Um, that's usually an indicator that you have something going on with your common or something going on with your power supply. So right now you can see that we're about 9.5 amperes. Everything is running well. Um, so we'll show you the goods when it's done. All right. my gold parts. These parts in particular have about one micron of hard gold. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and dry them um, and then we'll do one more tape test, make sure there were no further issues. All right, so we got these parts all dried up. We're going to do one last tape test. I'm going to make 
Make sure you can push it down real smooth and then pull that off. Everything looks good there. We're gonna come down at the bottom. Try that. Everything looks good. Okay, so I'll say that that was a success. Um, just for visual purposes, I wanna show you guys. So this is the part before it started plating. Um, these are some parts that we actually nickel plated through this process. Um, everything, all the steps we followed was were exactly the same, except for when we went into the gold, we actually went into the nickel instead. Um, and then you have your, your gold plate. So tungsten copper, a bright nickel finish, and a 24K gold.